Hello everyone and welcome to iimprove.channel. I'm PT Stu, personal trainer, real estate agent, and life coach. And today we'll be discussing the most important question that many people have, what should I do with my life? Now before we get started today, I just want to say that anyone who's having any sort of mental issues or feelings of suicide or any kind of issues that you maybe can't handle on your own, I always advise that you go see a medical professional to help you with those issues. With that being said, let's talk about the question at hand. What should I do with my life? Very often, parents, family, friends, and others make suggestions to a young person that influence them to go to college for a specific reason. And often, while in college, many of you are still wondering whether you made the right decision about your career. I know personally people who are in college right now who have interned in the career that they have chosen and feel like they don't like what they have chosen. This adds extra fear and pressure knowing that college graduation is coming up. But it's not just young people that are affected. I know people in their 40s and 50s who still don't know what they want to do. They're wandering. They're like children in adult bodies. They're doing the best they know how to do, but struggling day to day. I personally have experienced not knowing what to do in high school, in college, and in my late 20s. I struggled through life and felt lost and hopeless so many times. I wanna briefly share my story with you. And since this is my first video, you can learn about my life and how I overcame being lost. And then I wanna share specific tips that might help you. Please keep in mind, I'm only sharing my experience and what has helped me. My struggle started when I was 15 years old. Graduation was getting closer and I had people making suggestions as to what I should do. I felt pressure because there was a lot to consider and I also felt pressure in high school to be a part of the crowd. I stopped considering the future and my only concern was the pursuit in front of me. What did I want at this time? I wanted to lose my virginity and have a girlfriend. I thought it would make me cooler. I did end up meeting a girl and for the first time this girl was interested in me and that made me feel good. She was far more experienced than me sexually and she smoked cigarettes and did drugs. I felt inferior. I didn't want to feel that way anymore and I lost my virginity. My parents ended up finding out that me and this girl were together and they did not approve of her. So they made me break up with her and they had me go get tested for STDs. It wasn't long after that before I found out that I contracted a life ending disease. Thankfully, later in life, I was told by the doctors that I was cleared of that disease, that it was no longer detected in my body. But at the time, this incident destroyed me. It was at that point that I decided that I was just going to do whatever I wanted. I was going to do everything that everyone told me not to do. And I was going to learn from myself why that was. I wanted to have more experience than everyone around me. I didn't want to feel inferior anymore. I stopped thinking about the future and the idea of what should I do turned negative. I started smoking cigarettes and I started doing drugs. This lasted for 12 years. After high school, I started going to college. And of course, I was influenced by people to go into the medical field. Obviously, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was in sports, I was in Taekwondo, I lifted weights. So a field that was in line with my health consciousness seemed like a right fit. I started with radiology, but then I changed my major to physical therapy, and I was still confused. Then I talked to my aunt and uncle, who owned a home health agency, and they told me that if I get my degree in nursing, that I would have a spot at the company when I got out. This was an attractive offer since nurses made good income. I then changed my major a third time to nursing. During nursing school, I was still addicted to drugs. I wasn't focused, but I still made it to nursing four, which was one class away from graduating. Well, I actually had one class to nursing five, which was my last class to graduate with a nursing degree. My addiction was at its worst and I failed nursing four. I could have retaken the course, but I decided not to. I made this decision for the following reasons. I was going into a profession that would have me around drugs. My addiction was so bad, I couldn't focus. And finally, I learned what it meant to be a nurse. Nurses are more than medical intervention. They are nurturers. They're specialized people. It takes a special person to be a nurse. Nurses are special people. And unfortunately, that wasn't me. 
After I dropped out of nursing school, I was in search of what to do. I was panicking a little at this point. I changed my major to electrical engineering and took some courses, and I did well in them. But after being in school for so long, I decided to take my credits and graduate with an Associates of Arts degree. I didn't want to be in school anymore, and at this point, I decided that going into the military seemed like a good idea. I went to the Navy recruiter's office, and I took the ASVAB. I was high when I took the ASVAB, and I scored close to a 90, which is high enough to do anything. I was pleased and I felt like this could work, but I learned later that in order to be a fighter pilot, you needed a four-year degree to go in as an officer. Or you could work your way up to an officer, but I would have rather gone in with my four-year degree. So I decided that I would go back to school to get my four-year degree before I enlisted. Things in life changed again. I met my ex-wife, and we got together and I never ended up going back to school. Life went another way. Still not having a direction, I followed her lead in getting my personal training certification. I felt like it was a good fit since exercise has always been a part of my life. And for the first time, a job was rewarding for me. I was doing what I love. Unfortunately, the money wasn't good and I was unhappy again. I was floundering, multiple jobs, no sense of direction, and living for drugs. I spent a few years like this until I was finally able to quit drugs for good. <sighs> Once I quit drugs, my eyes were open. What was I doing here? What was I doing with my life? I realized that I had settled and that where I was was not what I wanted. So I did the hardest thing ever and I left my wife. I changed my phone number, I changed my friends, I got a job where I was in solitude by myself and I had a lot of time to introspect. I didn't know what to do. I was basically starting over. I would have to learn everything that I could and maybe all of that would culminate into something great. So I had multiple jobs in different areas that would give me different experiences. I also went online and found a guy. This guy was an engineer and he had leukemia. So he couldn't work and he needed help around the house. He was very knowledgeable in many things and taught those things to me. I was able to apply the things that I learned from him to my future work. It was only when I quit doing drugs that I was able to look at myself constructively. I knew who I was and that wasn't working for me. I began to change myself, which is extremely hard. We are so set in our way of who we are and how we react that it's almost impossible to change. When I met my current wife, she challenged me in many ways. She encouraged me to get my real estate license, to continue personal training, and to take on new challenges like fix and flip. Because of God, my wife, and my perseverance, I can say that my life is where I want it to be. As you can see, I bounced around in life, trying one thing to another to try and figure out what worked. I ended up learning a lot about what I didn't like and what I did like. Your story may not be the same as mine. You may be younger or you may be older, but regardless of our differences, I'm gonna lay out a few points that have helped me through my story. Now these tips can be applied in a different order than I'm gonna tell you, okay? So I'm gonna lay them out in a numerical order, but you'll be able to see how they kind of circle around into each other. All right, point number one, ask yourself is who I am working. This is where you want to examine yourself. Take a look at your life and think about what can be better. If there's nothing else that you can do right now, you can take care of your health. Losing weight and getting into shape are simple ways to help you just feel better day to day. Another thing that you can do is have good hygiene. Make sure you brush your teeth, make sure you take showers, make sure you wash your clothes, Make sure you wear deodorant. Take pride in yourself. Something that doesn't seem as important, but actually is, is to make sure you have a clean car. Make sure you have a clean house, room. Make sure everything that you have is in order. Because I don't know if you feel the same way I do, but when I have a messy house or a messy car, it actually affects my mood. It makes me feel unsettled. But when things are in their place and clean, I feel more organized and less stressed and I can focus on other things. Have a standard that you live by. My standard, just an example, my standard, I have to be physically fit. I go to the gym five days a week, I try to dress well, and I try to maintain a certain attitude. All right, point number two, get rid of distractions. 
It was only when I was able to get the distractions out of my life that I was able to see clearly. And I was also to able to achieve things that were more difficult. Point number three, learn about what you like and desire what's good for your life. It's okay to like something that others don't like. It's also okay to want things. When I was growing up, I got to a place where I didn't want things. I got used to having nothing, so I stopped wanting things. This is a bad mentality because it takes away my desire to attain things that I wanted. And how can you have goals unless you want things? All right, point number four, spend time with people that you look up to or spend time with people who have achieved what you want. Always keep this in mind. You're gonna be like the five people that you hang out with the most, so choose wisely. If I'm in the gym, and I see someone with great shoulders, I'm gonna go ask them what to do. They might know something that I don't know. If I work closely with a millionaire at my job, I'm gonna ask them for tips on how to become a millionaire. You want to associate with the people who have the answers. That brings me to point number five. Learn everything you can. Learn everything you can from those people. People with the great shoulders, people with millionaires, I mean, those are my examples, but you have your own examples. To. Think about the person that you want to be like. Go to them, talk to them, and see what they have to say. The other part of that is when I say learn everything you can, don't limit yourself. Learn how to change a tire. Learn how to cut grass. Learn how to fix a toilet. Whatever it may be, never say that you're too good for anything. But just to give you an example, if you learn how to do something, you'll learn the cost of it. So when it came to doing fix and flip, I had to learn how to paint, how to do drywall, how to hang fans, all of these different things. And when I got to a certain point, started hiring people to do these things for me. And so when I was hiring these people, because I knew the cost and the time to do these things, I was able to discern someone who was taking advantage of me versus someone who wasn't. And when you learn everything, these things will come around in your life. You'll see these things come around again and again and again. You might be able to use something again in the future. Point number six, be open to criticism and know the difference between someone who's trying to help and someone who's just trying to bring you down. The most important part of this is being able to examine yourself, which is going back to point number one. You have to be able to look at yourself. So when you're dealing with somebody who is criticizing you, you have to examine yourself and say, is what this person is saying about me something that is genuinely wrong with me or are they just trying to break my spirit if it's something that's genuinely wrong with you and I'm gonna give you an example my wife is honest with me and she's not trying to hurt me although sometimes we do get in a fight okay but uh, she had mentioned to me that I had a little bit of chub on my back and you know the way I took that is that it's my personal preference that I want to be in good shape that's my standard so what do I do is she trying to call me fat am I am I gonna get hurt by this no, what I decided to do was I'm gonna start eating a little less, I'm gonna start working out a little bit more, and guess what happened? I fixed that problem that was bothering me, and that lives up to my standard. Whenever somebody is trying to criticize you, you're going to get angry. Nobody likes to be told about themselves. It's very frustrating. <laughs> It's okay to get angry when somebody tells you about yourself. Get angry. And then I want you to go back and think about what they said. And then decide whether it's something that you can change in your life to make you better or if it's something that is just meant to hurt you. And this segues into number seven. Stop running from difficult situations in your life. It goes straight back to point number six. When you have somebody criticizing you, what do most people do? I don't need this. I'm going to leave. Forget you. I'm never going to talk to you again. You know, many people in life don't succeed because of that very thing. They don't want to deal with a situation, so they leave. Now, there are situations that you should leave. If you're being abused, you should leave that situation. But if it's a situation that's tough, then you should strive to work through that situation. This will give you mental toughness. I have an example for you. My stepson, in high school, he joined the swim team. He wasn't very good at swim, and he felt like he wanted to quit. And I told him, you need to stay on the swim team and you need to finish it out. Because if you quit this, it's going to start creating a pattern of I'll quit this, I quit this, I quit this. And he ended up sticking it out. He wasn't the best by any means on the swim team, but we were all proud of him for sticking it out and he got great exercise and he got it into great shape. And so there was a lot of benefits besides learning mental toughness. And that translated into him going into college, going into degree field and getting that degree here in about a year. So stop running away from difficult situations. Learn to endure, learn to get mental toughness. There are some phrases that have stuck with me my entire life. Number one, pressure makes diamonds. And number two, 
even the tiny seed knew that in order to grow, it must be covered in darkness and struggle to reach the light. Life is a struggle. It's hard. It's not easy. But establishing mental toughness will allow you to get through. And if you can't make it through on your own, have faith. That's number eight. If you don't have the answers and nobody else around you does, listen to your heart. God speaks to your heart. And when you finally know what you want, put yourself in the right situation. Wait at that bus stop because eventually that bus will come. Okay guys, that was my last point. That was my story. That was a little bit about me. I hope these points helped you in some way. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.